What's up everybody, it's Josh from the Underground Garage. Uh, starting a new project today. The car behind me is a 1993 Mustang. It's a four cylinder car. I'm gonna do an LS swap and I got a pair of small turbos for it. So we're gonna try to, try to go fast. So we'll see. Uh, the goal for the, the project is uh, to run tens in the quarter mile uh, for less than $4,000 total investment, car, everything. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I've done a, a couple turbo builds before, a couple LS swaps before. Uh, I haven't ever done one for me though, so I'm excited about doing one for me. So let me introduce you to the car and, uh, and we'll get going. I bought the car for $900. Uh, it is essentially exactly what you would expect from a $900 Mustang. Uh, car's got 170,000 miles on it. Uh, it's relatively rust free, which is really all I was concerned about. Uh, it's relatively straight. It's been hit. Uh, we got some damage here on the quarter. Uh, and then this fender has been replaced and actually rattle canned white. Uh, you can see where whatever they hit that caused the fender damage is still up there. So mismatched wheels, red interior. This would be the second Fox body that I've built. I did one a few years ago for me. Um, here's some pictures. A lot of parts are left over from that car. So the $4,000 is a goal with using the parts that I already had laying around. Uh, so it's kind of hard to say how much it'll, it'll really cost if you dig down into what that stuff costs. But since I had so many parts laying around, uh, that's why I decided to build another Fox is because I had a big head start on the build with all the extra stuff that I had. Uh, I named the project Walter White. I did that because the car is white and uh, it's, a, it's a 93 four cylinder Mustang, just a pretty benign, uh, you know, plain Jane car, and hopefully over time we're going to transition into just a, a really, really badass street car. Uh, so in the show Breaking Bad, that's what Walter White does. He transitions from from a, a benign guy to a, a badass. So that's what we're going to try to do. The first thing we're going to do is put the rear end together for the car. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's get going on that. What I'm doing is welding the axle tubes to the, the center of the housing. Uh, sometimes those tubes will twist in there when you start to make power. I'm using an arc welder. The reason I'm using the arc welder, it doesn't have to be as clean. So if this thing was really dirty. Uh, it's just really hard to get clean. And the flux on the arc welding rod helps with that. It makes the rod a lot more tolerant to dirt and grease and that sort of thing. So that's why I arc welded it. I'm going to use a set of 273 gears when I build the rear end. Uh, not typically considered a performance gear. Uh, however, in the past, uh, the turbo setups that I've done, the taller gear, uh, the turbos really like that load to kind of pull against. So uh, the ring gear that's on here right now is a 410 ring gear. I'm going to pull that off 
Uh, if the 273s don't work out, uh, I have a set of 355s and then I have this set of 410s as well. So with the turbo 400 transmission, there's no overdrive, so I think the 273s will really help the car drive nice on the highway, that sort of thing. And I think the turbos will like that gear, so that's what we're going to start with. This carrier, this is a 31 spline carrier. This is out of a Sport Track Ford Explorer. I just got it from the junkyard. Uh, I got it a, a few years ago to build the other car. When I put it together a few years ago, uh, I rebuilt the traction lock, the plaza traction unit in here, and I've noticed that it's not real tight, uh, that it will still one tire every once in a while, or I notice that on the old car. Uh, so I'm gonna take it apart, I'm gonna add a shim to it to tighten up that, uh, that pause attraction so I always get the two tire. All right, everything's taken apart and clean. Uh, when you take yours apart, if you're gonna do this, one of the things you might find, there's a couple different layouts for how the, the fibers and the steels are laid in there against the gear. It wouldn't be uncommon to find a fiber or a clutch right up against the gear when you take it apart. The hang up with that, if you look at the, the area of that fiber compared to the inside of the gear, the whole fiber, the whole clutch doesn't touch the gear. You give up about 10% of the holding power of the pause attraction rear end if it's set up that way. This is how I do it. I do a steel drive, a fiber, two steels, a fiber, another steel, a fiber, and then the shim. Now what we've got, you've got maximum, all the clutch is touching a steel on that side and all of the clutch is touching the shim on this side. So you've got all, as much clutch engagement as possible when you put it together that way. If you want the traction lock to have as much grip as possible, when you assemble your shims and your clutches and your steels and everything on the two sides of the side gears, go ahead and slide an axle in here it's gonna poke through, put a C-clip on it, pull it out, do the same thing on this side, and put your center pin in. And then measure the gap right there between the axle and the center pin. Uh, you want that to be as tight as you can. Uh, that's gonna give you the most grab from the positive traction unit. So when I built this one, I came up with five thousandths on this side and 10 thousandths on that side. So it's built really tight. Uh, so it may chatter a little bit driving around because of that, but the additional strength of having the, the two tires all the time uh, is gonna be worth it. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the pinion ready to go in. Uh, there's an inner pinion bearing that gets pressed on here, but before you can do that, there's a shim that needs to go between that bearing and the, the pinion. Uh, if you have an old ring and pinion that you took out of the rear end and you took the pinion bearing off, you can measure the shim that was in there. Uh, if you're building a Ford 8.8, .8, and you don't know what size shim to use, you're like I am where you start with nothing. Um, I'm gonna save, save everybody some time. Put a 30,000th shim in it and put it together. So that on the 8.8s, I've done a lot of them and nine times out of 10, the, the inner pinion shim, it needs to be a 30. So put your 30 in there and put it together. We got our new inner pinion bearing. It's gonna go on there like that. And we got a new race. It's gonna go like that, but the race is gonna get driven into the housing. It's a press fit into the case. One thing that I ran across the very first time I ever built an 8.8, .8, the pinion bearing and the pinion race, they have got to be the same brand. Uh, I ran, I can't remember what I did, but maybe it was a, a national race with a Timken bearing and the rear end would not go together properly. And I, I took it up apart and back together probably a dozen times before I figured it out, wasted a bunch of time. So the problem that you're gonna have 
you gotta put your shim on here, but your pinion bearing, it doesn't just slide on there, it's a press fit. So after you put your shim on, you're gonna go somewhere, you're gonna get that pressed on there. Uh, what happened to me is I got a set of, of Ford Racing 410 Performance Gears from FRPP, and it came with the install kit. Well, the install kit comes with a Koyo bearing and a Koyo race. So I had installed the Koyo race into the housing. After I pressed this all together, it turned out I needed to change this pinion shim. So when I went to take the Koyo bearing off, I damaged the bearing, removing it from the pinion. Go down to the parts store. Uh, parts store that I went to didn't carry Koyo bearings. Um, the race was still in the, the housing. All I needed was a bearing. So I bought maybe a Timken bearing. Pressed my Timken bearing on there. Went to put it together. And after I was all said and done, it just wouldn't, it just didn't want to work right. It made noise. I couldn't figure it out. And so I'm having pressing that, the Timken bearing that I bought. I take everything back apart. I destroy that Timken bearing, taking it off. I take this shim, I change the thickness of this shim, I go back to the parts store, I buy another bearing, press it on there, and I'm back and forth and back and forth, and I'm blowing through bearings, uh, and it's just really frustrating. And so, the only way to put this together and make sure that this pinion shim is right without putting the, this bearing in jeopardy, if you have to take it apart, is to take a bearing, I don't know if you can see that in there, but I ran a die grinder around the inside of the bearing. This guy won't go down all the way. There's a gap right here. My setup bearing slips all the way down on there. The problem is, as you move through this and you do more than one, you need to have a setup bearing of every brand because your setup bearing is going to need to match the brand of the race that is in the case. So like this is a Timken race, I've got a Timken setup bearing. I have a Koyo race, I also have a Koyo setup bearing. Uh, national, I've got a national race, I have a national setup bearing. So I had these setup bearings that I've made and saved over time. So that's, uh, that's I never saw that anywhere on any other, anything on YouTube, online, anywhere where the race and the bearing needed to be the same brand. What was going on, this angle right here was different on the Koyo bearings in the Ford kit. Because this angle was different, the angle on the recepting angle on the race was also different, and I didn't know. So I had a Koyo race, and maybe, a, I don't remember, a Timken bearing or something, a, a brand of bearing that was not Koyo, and they would not mate properly in the differential. But there's no way, you can't tell by looking, you know, there's no way to know that's what was going on until I like I said I took it apart probably a dozen times until I figured it out so that's probably the biggest tip that I have on the 8.8 .8 stuff is on the, the pinion bearing setup